I was in the city when the planes hit the Trade Center, and uh, we saw the smoke and saw the buildings come down. Just can't believe they did this, you know. My uncle died over there. He was on the 96th floor of the first building, and we lost him forever. You know, I had family members there, also of mine. My priest when I was younger was a fire chaplain, um, Father Michael Judge. Um, it's, it's, you can't explain how you feel. I mean, you, there's so many mix of emotions that you and everything. You scared to walk on the streets because you don't know what's going to happen. It's sad, it's looking out there not seeing it. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard to take in, it's unbelievable. The idea of losing people all at once is just overwhelming. My heart goes out to all the people that did have family and friends that died there. We all cried on September 11th, 2001. So many countless people lost someone close to them that day. Over 10 children lost at least one parent. God cried that day. People all over the world. Because that day, we looked into the evil. We witnessed firsthand the destruction and devastation of hate and ignorance in its highest form. But we are Catholic Christians, people of hope and faith. It's that faith that will nourish and sustain us in these, the toughest of times. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Adriana, and welcome to the special edition of Real Faith TV. We'll remember the victims of September 11th. We will talk about how we are getting through this difficult time in history. How this tragedy has affected the way we live each day. And what vision and hope we have for the future. Mary and her brother Tom that day. Tom was married and the father of two-year-old twins. She shares an amazing story of healing that took place for her and her family. Father Martin Padovani, author of the book Healing Wounded Emotions, will answer the question so many people asked, how could God let this happen? We'll talk with our studio guests about how they're dealing with the tragedy. But first, let's see how the tragedy affected some high school students. Steve spoke with. My dad was in the first tower in the 62nd floor, and um, he got out safely, like miraculously, two minutes before the building fell. I started to, you know, not take for granted, you know, like saying goodbye to my dad in the morning, my mom, and, you know, starting to appreciate like the little things. I think you just appreciate things more, you know, you, you see your parents and you see everyone around you and you know that no, not everyone's parents came home. I had four uncles in the fire department. And um, luckily, they came out safe. A good friend of mine lost her aunt and her cousin. I've been in contact with her every day, and I just see how she reacts. So I just try to, I mean, I became so much closer with my, my friends just because I can't take them for granted. Like, you never know when they're going to be gone. You realize how quick your life can change. And I lost no direct family members, but people that I've played baseball with over the last 10 years, I lost their parents. And I have to see them every day and see what they're dealing with. I mean, there's people I know who lost both their parents, so you never know what's going to happen. So that's why I make sure that a lot of times my family and my friends, because you never know how truthfully important something is until you lose it. I've really just um, been closer, a lot closer to my family and with my friends, and it's made me more aware of like the world and around it and what's going on. Never miss the opportunity to say I love you or thank you just for all that they've done. I think that family has become more important to me uh, and making an effort to go to church. Um, I guess before you didn't really realize the, the value of life until it can just suddenly be taken away. Don't take life for granted because, you know, it may be your last day on earth. And that is so true. You know, you really shouldn't take life for granted. You should just appreciate every day that we have to live. Yeah, definitely. Take it day by day. Exactly. <laughs> How about we meet our studio guests today? Beth? Okay. Eric? Vanessa? Joe? Courtney? Kate? And Sarah? How are you doing, guys? Now, tell me, how have the events of September 11th and the aftermath of your lives? 
Well, I think I've a little bit more, especially with planes flying overhead. Um, in the weeks following the events, every time a plane flew over, I would just like tense up and it made me really nervous. Mm. And it also really made me appreciate my family much more because um, the South Tower fell. I I remembered that my cousin works for the stock exchange and I don't know where I'm going to be on a day-to-day -day basis and I called my mom and nobody really knew where he was so for a while there what had happened to him cell phone. yeah it was crazy in. so it was I think like Kate come a lot closer and more aware of how much my family really means to me because I have two uncles. One is a New York City policeman and the other is a fireman. Wow. So that day I was just like a wreck. I didn't know where they were from them. But I mean, they both turned out to be okay. I mean, then they've been going in in shifts and stuff. And it's just been hard. And but at least they're both physically okay. Emotionally, it's been hard. It makes you so much more thankful for them. Thanksgiving, when my one uncle came, he said, like, Grace. And it was just so nice. And you become so much more aware of how much people really mean to you. Yeah, I agree, you become a lot more aware, but also in the same sense, I think it's, it's brought up the better in people. A lot of people have gone out of their way now to, to do, a lot, do much better and nicer things to, for other people. Get together and go to church now when they normally wouldn't. Even in Christian Brothers Academy, when I go to school, we formed a group called Disaster Relief Committee, and we raised over $15,000 to help the families cope and to give it to any kind of that would help out the victims. It's definitely mm -hmm. a spirit of unity, you know, work together and really bring about the best in what can possibly be when you really work together and work hard for a good cause. Um, Mary and Pap and her family continue to cope with this tragic and actually her brother Tom, um, he marked, he was on the seventh floor. Um, and he actually, yes. In the second tower, Yes, right? yeah. exactly. Now, in the next segment, Marianne tells the incredible um, faith story of, how, of her experience and how she and her family were at ground zero and about one of the angels who helped them along the way. It was actually a New York City police officer, Officer John Griffin. And uh, we pick up the story where they first met Officer Griffin barricades at Ground Zero. Even though the destruction was so unbelievable, even bigger than what you saw on TV, the pile was so high and um, we all just couldn't help but to start to cry. Um, I guess we were crying loudly and a police officer who was guarding that intersection slowly, quietly stepped over to my family and said, you know, I'm sorry, um, did you lose somebody in there? One of us said my brother, and he very kindly said, moved his barricade aside and said, Why don't you step through here? And gathered the eight of us, and moved us about 20 feet from the crowd of hundreds, just gave us a moment. He said, um, why don't you pray? Gather yourselves together, and we did. And, um, and then he said, I'd like to, if you'd like to go down further, I'd like to escort you closer to the trade centers. And we did. We walked down three or four blocks closer uh, until we got to a fence where the National Guard was guarding everyone. And we stopped there. And he said, you know, take whatever time you need. And he just very quietly stepped aside. And we just allowed us time to grieve, to cry, to pray with one another. We were hugged by firemen and rescue workers, kept coming up to us and just patting us on the shoulder, or giving us a hug and saying, God bless you, and, you know, we're here for you, and we're going to keep working, and we'll try our best, you know, to find whoever you lost. Um, it was just this incredible experience of being so close to that place, and yet on sacred ground. You were just, you know, so loved in that place that it really gave us what we needed. Then Officer Griffin, his name was John Griffin, um, offered to take my mom and one other person closer. Um, at that time, they had a, a platform set up for visiting dignitaries or um, politicians, anyone who needed to be there. 
um, and he took my mom and my sister down into the rubble, to this platform. And um, while they were there, my mom felt very peaceful. She felt very close to my brother and yet not in pain. And she said to John Griffin, would you mind giving me a piece of this place? And he said he would be honored. And he went down off the platform and into the pile of rubble and picked up a chunk of concrete, and handed it to my mom, and saluted her. And just a few moments later, they heard a pipe band playing. The New York City Pipe and Drum Corps were playing in uh, ground zero in the area for the police officers and rescue workers to try to lift their spirits. And he walked them over to where they were playing. And what, when they got there, they stopped in front of them. And they started to play When Irish Eyes Are Smiling. And my mom smiled. And she said, you know, how did they know that Tom's Irish eyes were smiling? his life and that was the one thing that we felt so wonderful about was Tom's smile all the time and um, when we were standing on the perimeter the pipe band came out of the fence in front of us and marched past us while they were playing and for a moment there was just this sense of peacefulness for us the pain wasn't gone but that music just somehow softened it a little bit more and as they passed before us the dust settled because it was very dusty there. My husband Jim said, here comes your mom and your sister. And he said, is your mom smiling? And we all looked over and as she got closer to us, we realized that in fact my mom was smiling. She came over to us and through our tears gave us a great big hug and just said, it's okay, he's not here. You know, Tommy's up in heaven with daddy. and." He's not here, and she was so peaceful. It was just, she had been transformed before our eyes, and it was just such an unbelievable gift to have been there for that. That is an amazing story. Amazing, just. It's almost like they had a sense of closure. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's hard when someone goes and you're not able to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure, and they were just probably thinking of the last moments that, you know, she actually got to talk to him. And just to be there, that must have been And you know what, I think that closure. officer did give them a, a, a chance to say goodbye. Yeah, hearing stories like Marianne Paps, it's amazing to see how united our country has become. Uh, it's just unfortunate that it's taken this kind of tragedy for us to realize the importance of unity within our communities. Mm -hmm. You know, like, in my school, the day of the attacks, we had, like, um, impromptu liturgy. And it was, like, everyone was, like, so quiet. And we'll, usually when we file in, it's kind of loud and rowdy. But everyone just kind of went to their seats. It was very quiet. And it was just a time, time for reflection. And it was just, like, so peaceful in the chapel. Even now, it's still hard to believe that something like this happened, that it actually could happen. It's like a movie. Like, it's not even there. Yeah, no, many people have asked, you know, how could God let something like this happen? You know, when we think about God and something like this, and uh, how could God have allowed something like this to happen, suppose I ask the question, how could God have allowed his only son to be crucified by people who set him up? It was unfair, it was unjust. And I think it's a time like this that the crucifixion and redemption have a little bit more meaning in the sense that God allowed his own son to be treated in a malicious, unfair, violent way. And so what God was trying to teach us through that is that evil exists and that it's in the world and learn how to deal with it. And Jesus teaches us very beautifully in a very painful way to deal with the unfair realities of life the unjust things that happen, the sufferings that we, we, we shouldn't uh, have to endure. You know, I think that sometimes suffering can seem to be, you know, just too much for one person to, to take. But we have to remember that God never promised us we wouldn't have pain. But he did promise to walk with us. Just like that um, prior footprints. Um, in the prior it says that he sees two sets of footprints, and then in the hardest of times, he only sees one. And the reason for that was because 
God was carrying him. Exactly. And I think that's a beautiful poem of symbolism also, because with this tragedy, I mean, people have had to go through so much losses and just changing everything about their family, just ha having to live with it. And it's really hard, you know, and they just need to realize alone because a lot of people are going through this now and it's very hard. Uh, when we've been traumatized, when we've been hurt, we're going to feel angry, and sometimes we're going to feel angry with God. And that's okay. God understands it. We have to work through that. It means we're angry, we don't like what happened, and sometimes we don't know who to blame it on. So God's the easiest person. He understands that. But we gra gradually have to kind of come to grips with that anger, not get stuck in it and become bitter, but to be able to move through it, deal with it, talk about it, work our way out of it. Forgiveness uh, is a process. It's an intellectual aspect, first of all. I choose, I want to forgive them, but I'm still full of a lot of hurt and anger and feelings of re revenge and I want to get back in them. That's okay, because I've made the intellectual choice to forgive them, but I have to work through the feelings. That could take months. It could take years before we work through that. But I've forgiven the person, and I'm working on that, and I'm going to continue to work at it until I can come to a level of what we call spiritual forgiveness, where I can let go. But that may or may not happen. So we have to understand forgiveness in the sense that I need to do it, you need to do it, so we can free ourselves of this hate and bitterness that's inside of ourselves. It doesn't mean we condone what they, what they did. It doesn't mean that we uh, don't have to let them take the consequences of their misbehavior. Uh, and it doesn't mean that we absolve them. But, and we need to, uh, to obtain justice. But forgiveness is for us to be able to kind of let go of this. That is so true. I think forgiveness is really important because if you don't forgive, you just start to build up walls against people and you start shutting people out and you become bitter like he said. And I think another important thing to remember is that God only creates good, not evil. That's you know, so some true. people are like, why did God do this? He didn't do that. He was probably just standing there crying. That's so yeah. true. Now, can any of you share how you've expressed um, or dealt with your emotions relating to this tragedy? I think I, think I heard it best said when a speaker came into our school and he was talking with me and a friend of mine whose mom died in the accident and he said that God didn't make the decision to, for the planes to crash into the buildings. It wasn't God in the planes, it was the terrorists that did it. God was actually there preventing people from getting on those planes and preventing those buildings from filling up when the accident would happen. So God didn't plan it and it wasn't God's fault. Therefore, you shouldn't blame God or be angry with God. Related to what he said, a lady at my church wrote a song about everything that happened, and one of the lines in the song that I feel is just so true and people can get so much out of is, don't try to make sense, they're the devil's events. I think that just sums it up all right there. God didn't do it. you got to remember that there's still evil and that that's what it was. It wasn't God at all. Uh, a friend of my mom's that works in the Pentagon, her office was like two... Um, blocks away from where the plane hit and she said that her faith is so much stronger now because she's like uh, she lost a lot a lot of her friends that were there and she could have been one of those people and God saved her <clears throat> excuse me and God shows us that he's there by first of all all the people that got out like the people that ran down 80 flights of stairs I mean that was truly a miracle like people wouldn't have been able to do that and also like one of the things is the cross that they found at ground zero there was the two beams that was perfectly welded together and like in the ground. I mean, that was certainly a sign that he was there and with us during our tragedy. Very symbolic. And I know for me, my faith is the key um, to my life. I mean, it helps me get through the roughest of times and it just helps me make decisions and just throughout this whole event, just having faith is basically what you have to have. Well, let's see how some other high school students relied on their faith to get them through. We'll also hear from St. John Vianney High School Chaplain, Father Jean Vaverick, and Mary Ann Papp will talk about where she finds the courage to keep going. My faith, it's actually kind of funny, like you go to church the Sunday after uh, September 11th and it was packed, like you could, there was only standing room. And uh, like I'm not really one of those people, like I've always gone to church, but uh, like it's a newfound faith. I mean, a lot of people are finding that now. My faith is just, it's there for me, like it's, it's like a, com a comforting thing always. When everything happened, I felt so lost and just scared and I knew, like I didn't know what to do. I just knew that God would help me through and he's, 
been giving me so much strength through everything. I think my faith's gotten a lot more stronger. Like, I've been closely connected more. It's just, you feel better. I feel like you pray. And just when you your daughter, you don't know what to, really, to do. Prayer and it really helps out. You kind of have to, like, smile, sort of, because you know they're in a better place now. And I think in the end, it's all going to be just all right. We Christians say death is not the end. And we have to believe that in times like this. And that's, the, that's what I've been trying to share with folks, that it's all right to cry, it's all right to grieve, and it's natural. But we cry as people of faith. And so we know that our loved ones aren't really gone, that we will see them one day, and that our belief in the resurrection enables us to keep on walking. I've been able to get through this experience so far because I feel so surely that God loves me and that he wants me to pick up my cross and go on. Um, I have fallen many times. Sometimes people talk to me and they see this bright person that has a lot of hope and a lot of strength and they think, oh, she's fine, she doesn't need anything. Um, but I have fallen under the weight of this cross many, many times. Um, more so now in the last four weeks than even in the first four weeks right after the attacks happened. Um, but God wants us to find the good in this and to be able to rally that good and use it to make a better world and to help all of us get to heaven. And when we pick up our cross, even though it's heavy, even though there's great burden, and we move on and we take the next step or the next five steps or the next step backwards, we're still moving towards God and that's what gives me the courage and the strength to keep going. What about you guys? How does your faith help you to, you know, deal with all of this? I think just knowing that God is always there for us and that we can be close to him through prayer and that whatever happens, it's going to be okay and that he's there for us and that knowing that the people that die that day, that they will see God and that they will be in paradise with him and that certainly gives me a sense of hope if for the people that lost like family members or friends that, you know, they're happy. I think it's really important too because at a recent retreat that I um, was at, one of the facilitators in their public speech asked us um, if we could bring three things out from our house if there was a fire besides, you know, family members and dogs, <laughs> what would it be? And I actually wrote down um, pictures, um, my memory box, the music that I write, and her response was nothing because everything that was important to her was held in her heart. And I think that's what's really important. A lot of people who have lost a family member or someone that they love should realize that it's not about the tangible items that you know you can see, it's what's held in your heart, it really is. Another way that I found is talking to your friends and family and making sure they know how you feel. And also better yet, it's making, taking part in trying to make things better, like give blood or make donations, give up a little thing to help the families that lost someone. Community it's a activities. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a really good idea. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, having somebody to talk to or go to is really important. Um, myself, Eric, uh, along with a couple other kids, CBA, um, belong to a group called the Society of the Passion. Uh, it's organized by Father, Father Paul Wirks, chaplain of the FBI in New York. Um, and we come together and talk about our faith together, uh, and we try to make ourselves better uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and socially. That's right. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's great. That's cool. Now, don't be afraid to talk about your feelings, fears, or anxiety to a trusted friend. And pray. Pray for all those who lost someone. Talk to God about what you can do to make a difference in people's lives that are hurting. We're going to close the show today with St. Anne's Children's Choir from Lawrenceville, New Jersey, singing Trust in God. Don't forget to post your thoughts on our website at realfaithtv.com. Or call us at 609-406-7402. Until next time, remember the words of King David in Psalm 23. Even when I walk through the dark valley, I fear no harm, for you are at my side. Your rod and staff give me courage. God bless you. 
Peace be with you all, and join us again next time on Real Faith TV. Peace.